Indeed, it is a pleasure for me to be with you on this morning. Um, I know that you heard uh, the introduction by Pastor Alex, and uh, I just want to let you know those are some lofty expectations <laughs> that were set this morning. And so uh, I hope I can uh, reach them at some point during this sermon this morning. Um, again, I am coming from the great city of Wichita Falls, but I am a Dallas native. I was born and raised here, so it's always a pleasure to be back home in some way. Um, just know that my mom is watching. Um, I may not come see you later today, uh, but hello. <laughs> But again, I am excited to be here, excited for our time together. I do want to um, let you know that I am a participatory uh, preacher. So if you ever feel inclined during the time of our, 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 our sermon this morning to say amen, I welcome those. Uh, I, there will be a point where I ask you to turn and talk to the person next to you. Um, and I know that may be a little uh, uncomfortable, um, so let's do it, um, just to get some practice in, because there will be some moments during this sermon where I will say, hey, turn to your neighbor. So right now, turn to someone right next to you, and then look them in the eye and say, it's better here. Right, let's do it again. Say, it's better here. <laughs> Amen. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity we have to worship you in presence and in spirit. The great psalmist David wrote, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. God, make us glad to have a place to worship you. Restore in us a zeal, not for the building, but for the community the building was built for. Rekindle in us a love for the people that this place was built for. And lastly, oh God, we ask that you give us a spirit of excitement and anticipation to experience you in new and fresh ways every single time we set foot in this place. For we desire God to be exactly where you are. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you in your sight this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, in 1982, broadcast network NBC was tasked with creating a comical television show based upon the life of a former baseball player turned bar owner and a quirky group of friends who met at the bar regularly to talk about their problems and talk about life. The show was set in Boston, Massachusetts, but obviously it was filmed in Los Angeles. <laughs> but the creators of the show felt that in order for the show to become a household name, it needed a theme song that would be unforgettable. They eventually found a song co-written and performed by the songwriter by the name of Gary Portnoy. The song became an instant hit and one of the most recognized TV show theme songs in the history of television. Let's see if we can create a little bit of nostalgia this morning. Taking your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Anyone feeling nostalgic? Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Anyone feeling happy? <laughs> feeling bubbly? <laughs> Anyone remember sitting in front of the television waiting for this show to start each week? For those young people, y'all probably like, what in the world is that? Well, it's only one of the greatest shows to ever be on television called Cheers. And Cheers became an instant hit and in television classic, also becoming one of the greatest shows of all times. And honestly, what made this show a classic, it became a model for shows like Friends, How I Met Your Mother, and even The Simpsons. And I believe wholeheartedly that there is something about this show that our churches and our ministries can learn a thing, from, a thing or two from. And it is this, that it shows us that a place where people want to be and a place where people can be themselves and bring all their problems to the forefront, but also do it in a way where we do it together in love, in fun, and in hospitality. 
That sounds like what the church should be, right? And now this show was so popular that on its last episode, it recorded 93 million people who watched it. That was 40% of the of US population at the time. That's amazing. Now what made this show so popular? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> it was aired every week at the same time, and it was headlining Thursday night's must-see TV lineup. How many of y'all remember the Thursday night must-see TV lineup? And it created an excitement with every episode that led to anticipation for us to sit in front of our televisions the very next week. The characters, they weren't perfect, but they were trustworthy. And that was something that resonated with audiences every single week. Now, for those of us who are old enough to remember the early 80s and the early 90s, it was a span in which Cheers ran was what Charles Dickens says was a tale of two cities. And what Charles Dickens says in the tale of two cities, it was the best of times and the worst of times. In the decade in which Cheers ran, we saw war and scandal. We saw tech boom with the introduction of the block cell phone and the block PC computer. Who in here had a block cell phone? I know someone in here had a block cell phone. My aunt had one, and I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> we all know, also witnessed a, tale of, a true tale of two cities here in America, where suburban communities began to pop up from the wealth of Reaganomics and the subsequent destruction of urban communities turning once prosperous cities into impoverished ghettos. And to make matters worse, somebody shot JR in Dallas. <laughs> the young people are like, who is JR? <laughs> Ask one of your parents or your grandparents who JR is. It was a big deal, I promise you. <laughs> it was the best of times, and it was the worst of times. And Cheers gave the world a once per week escape from to witness community and friendship at a bar. But one thing that Bar at Cheers didn't have, and what the writer of the scripture that I'm gonna read for us this morning reveals to us, is that we have a place where the presence of God is for true transformation of our hearts, amen? amen. The scripture that we are gonna to read today comes out of Psalm 84, and it reads, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, indeed faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for the joy of the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the sw a swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young at your altars. O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, happy are those who live in your house ever singing your praises. Salah. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. And they make, and the, as they go through the valley of Baca, they make, their, make a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Salah. Behold our shield, O God, look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk right, walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trust in you. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. All right, help me preach again and turn to your neighbor and say, it's better. Turn to your neighbor, turn to someone and say, it's better. It's better. Here. Here. <laughs> you know, there is a saying that familiarity breeds contempt. And while some psychologists tell us that this is hardly true because the more familiar you become with something, the more fond you are to grow toward it. When it comes to the church and when it comes to body of Christians gathering together, history, especially recent history, has shown us that people are becoming more contemptuous toward the church than fond. Do I have a witness here this morning? 
It's easy for people to simply pass by these beautiful edifices with crosses adorned to the top of them because in many ways the familiarity of seeing them on every corner of every street is no longer an allure for people to enter them. And even for those of us who find our way to the church each week to worship and lift up the name of Jesus, sometimes we find it hard to do and we do it grudgingly or without much excitement. Routine, even. Just another week of obligations or another weekly commitment that we check off our to-do list. And as we enter the space where the Spirit of God is, we often leave as if the Spirit of God was never there. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes we come into the place, the church, where the Spirit of God is supposed to be, and we leave the church as if the Spirit of God was never there. I was going to say, if you can't say amen, say ouch. (laughs) But if we are going to be the place where in the midst of a global pandemic, economic uncertainty, and division and despair at every turn, and news stories, we will have to bring some excitement into this place where God has commissioned those who call themselves Christians to reveal to the world that there is no other place in the world to go to escape the madness around us and that it is indeed better here. Amen? Amen. And I believe there are three things that we can extract from this scripture that we read this morning in Psalm 84 that will help us reclaim these spaces we call church and do ministry that transforms us and the community around us. Y'all still with me? My first point is this, the church's power is not in its building or its structures, but comes from the presence of the living God. I'll say that again, the power of the church is not in its buildings or its structures, but it comes from the presence of the living God. Verse two in Psalm 84 says, my soul longs, indeed it faints for the courts of the Lord, My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. And the question I want to present to us this morning is, when was the last time you longed to be in the place where God is? I'll let that sit for a minute. When was the last time your heart just desired to be in the place where God is? I could wrap this sermon up on this point alone, but I told you I had three, so I got two more left. But when we get excited about coming to the place where God is, other people will be trying to figure out what is so special about this place and try to get here as well. And I promise you this, if you, when you're at your coffee shop in the morning, getting your coffee on your way to church, were bubbling with excitement and someone is saying, what are you you so happy about? What, What are you so happy about? And you said, I am going to church. I can guarantee you, you will leave some people very perplexed. The psalmist says, see, the psalmist that, who wrote this scripture, they didn't have the privilege of coming to the church every single week. As a matter of fact, the temple or the church or the courts that the psalmist is talking about, it wasn't a hop, skip, and a jump to get there. Many of us can get to church within five minutes. And if we're honest, if we had to do what many of the people in scripture had to do to get to church, we would be regular members at Bedside United Methodist Church or soft pillow campus ministry where I serve, but I I digress. That's why in verse 7, the writer acknowledges that those who make the pilgrimage to the temple go from strength to strength because it was a journey to get there. But you know what carried them to make that journey? They had joy and anticipation. They journeyed from near and far to get to church or get to the temple because they had joy and anticipation about what God was going to do when they got to that place. Which brings me to my second point, and it's if we're going to show the world that it is really better here where we are, we are going to have to have some joy and some anticipation. Now, I heard earlier that there are some people who want me to, don't want me to preach long because, you know, the Cowboys are playing today. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, I've been to many Cowboy games in my, in my day, and the, only time I hear booze and I hear no joy and excitement is when we're losing. And sometimes even then we're still cheering and we're still excited. And so I asked the question is, um, 
how do we mimic the joy and anticipation that we have at our sporting events and in all the places that we go and we don't have that same joy and anticipation when we come to the place where God can transform lives? Who? If you can't say amen, say ouch. <laughs> Verse 5 in the scripture that we read said, Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praises. It is our excitement and our anticipation and expectation of what the living God is going to do through us, in us, and to us that brings us or should bring us to the house of God. And if we're going to do that, that will also become infectious. And it will not only be in this place where we are, but into our homes, in our schools, and in our communities. Amen? Amen. And lastly... To show the world that it is truly better here where we are, we have to walk uprightly. Now, this is the part where typical people check out of the scripture because they're like, oh, what do you mean by walking uprightly? Well, I'm glad you asked again. <laughs> to walk upright means to trust God above all things, everything else. And to walk with God's people and to know how hard it is to trust God, we have to be with people and in community in order to do it. And so if we are going to walk uprightly and we're going to really, really trust God, we're going to need the community to do it. Do I have a witness this morning? Because God's timing sometimes on some things is not our timing. Oh, I wish I had some help right there. Sometimes God moves, sometimes God moves when we expect or think we need God to. Sometimes God doesn't move when we think, oh, we need God to. And trusting in God sometimes can be very hard because there are things or there are some things we feel we don't need God to do. We don't feel like we need God if we have a job or we don't need God's provision because we have a job. I wish I had some help right there. Sometimes we feel like we don't need God's protection because we've got our own protection, if you know what I'm talking about. We've got kids in the room. Sometimes we feel like we don't need God's presence because I have my loved ones with me. I have the person who brings me joy with me. But those things don't bring true happiness and, that come, and the things that bring true happiness comes from trusting in God, trusting in God's people, and trusting in God's people with God's people. Amen? Amen. And that's why we need the church. That's why it's better here. Because we come here to profess that our lives are not our own, but we are to live under God's sovereignty. We go to church because we are, because together we are strong and mighty and powerful for the, for the transformation of the world. But we know that that strength that changes the world only comes from God. We come to church to profess that our worth is not in this building or this denomination or the money we have or the houses we own or the cars we drive or the clothes we wear, but only from what God has given us. And we come to church because we should reside with happiness and peace resides here and happiness resides here that surpasses all of our understanding and that we are happy when we come to this place because we can truly trust in a living and loving God. Amen? Amen? Let us pray. Gracious God, how we thank you now for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, God, that you are a living and true God and that your presence is here for the transformation of us, the church, and the world. Help us to respond to you with excitement and joy to acknowledge that this place, this building, this community, this church is here for the edification of the community. We pray, God, that whatever is holding us back from having joy and excitement to live into the truth, that transformation happens in a place where it's actually better than every other place in the world, help us to live into that. And when we receive the fruits of the blessings of trusting in you and trusting in community, we won't own them for ourselves, but we will give you all the glory. In the master's name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.